you are a man at arms. You work for some knights, and you are under a king, and you are uh, fairly well experienced now that you've uh, been through some battles. Uh, you are in your uh, knight's pavilion tent. The knight isn't there. However, the other men at arms and you men are there and they are celebrating. And the reason that you're celebrating is because you have just defeated the Empire. The Masonic kings had banded together to defeat the evil Empire under the man dwarf Nergoth, who was an emperor, an evil, uh, tyrannical despot emperor, which I will go into more detail on soon. So you're in your uh, pavilion tent. Uh, men are relaxing themselves or um, getting themselves all limbered up after a long march and battles. Uh, they're having some wine, some victory wine, celebrating, singing songs. And it starts to rain outside. And uh, it's a bit of a war, but nothing to worry about. Uh, the, uh, the, you can hear songs of victory in some of the other tents. And, uh, uh, however, there is in this particular tent, there is a slight bit of melancholy. Melancholy because uh, of the uh, comrades in your particular uh, battalion. Uh, they have not had the luck to um, obtain any loot or spoils of war. There's been no city that was sacked, so having defeated the Empire so easily, now you will return to your uh, homes in your towns without any gold, without any money, nothing to show for the victory, uh, not even a, a betterment of lifestyle or anything. You know, the pay is low. You know, pretty, pretty much volunteered for the work. And so you will uh, have this sort of, they, they all have a sort of melancholy about this. No glory whatsoever. There was, even though the, the battle was harsh, you, your particular battalion did not fight in the thickest part of the battle, and they Certainly did not win any glory or renown. So there's a little bit of melancholy, but they're having fun. And uh, drinking and singing songs. Now, as you're sitting there on your cot uh, with the other men around you, um, playing dice, doing other sorts of things, you notice someone appear at the tent's opening. It's a figure. It's a short figure. A man, a man figure. Uh, perhaps you mistook it for a dwarf. You look and... Oh, it looks like a very familiar figure. And then suddenly you realize it is the man-dwarf, Nergoth, the Emperor. He is at your tent, but yet the Emperor has been defeated. How could he be at your tent? Isn't he, is, has he run down uh, into the south or with the rest of his army and hidden in the swamp, the, the remnants of his army? Are they, are, are they not on the run? Well, this is a great uh, mystery to you. You don't say anything first. And uh, you suddenly, however, hear the voice of this of this dark figure that points at you. He points at you, points into the tent, and he says, "Please let a a poor a poor dwarf in that has been lost from his regiment. I I do not know my way, and uh, there is great rain out here. Do you mind if I come into the tent?" And uh, first you're very concerned about it, and then then you say, "Well." Uh, I, I, should I say anything? And you think to yourself, and, and then, and then of course, someone turns around. And someone else has heard. One of the one of your companions has heard, and it, it, is, it is a great surprise to you. And uh, one of the companions says, "Who is that? Who is there?" And then you, of course, say, "It is it is the Emperor Nergoth, the dwarf. Seize him!" And so they all run and seize. They seize this this poor dwarf man and drag him into the tent. And he says, No, no, I'm not, I'm not the emperor. I, I merely look like him. He, the emperor, the emperor, it's, uh, many of us dwarves look very similar. I am a cousin of his. Do not mistake me. Please do not mishandle me so. I am, I am not the emperor. The emperor has been slain, has he not? Has he not fled or something like that? Of course you know that, that this is a lie. You know what the profile of the emperor is. You've seen the profile of the emperor on the coins of the, that were minted in that particular imperial period. You know because he is so infamous. He was a great despot, a tyrant. 
he was called the butcher of Namaliel, this town that in which he has claimed to have butchered many people. So you know who this is. He is a war criminal, and you know that uh, you, you will get a great reward for capturing him. At least you hope so. So your companions all have a hold of this dwarf. They have decided not to let him go. One of the companions says, He must be he must be a traitor, or perhaps he, he was a coward that ran from his regiment. Why is he not with his, his own men? And the dwarf tries to explain that I I have been separated from my crew. Uh, my lord is Vorta. And then one of the other companions, one of the older men at arms, says there is no Vorta, Dwarf Lord, in these campaigns. You're making up a story. Who are you? Are you Nurgoth? Then you see one of the companions gets very scared, and he, he goes to grab his sword. He's saying, I will arm myself. This could be Nurgoth. Well, no need to arm yourself, you say. He's just an unarmed man, a man-dwarf. There's no reason to fear him. Unless he really is Nergoth. Aye, and if he really is Nergoth, he has the ability with those perilous arms to slay each one of us in swift, engaged combat without even blinking an eye. I will not take that chance. The others' companions look around. They're very concerned now. What if this is Nergoth? One of the companions says. I know, says another one. On Nergoth's arm, there is a tattoo. He is one of the Ophist Mart. He fought with the Sand Pirates in the Dry Blood Sea in the days before he was General Hermes. He must still have the Ophist ta tattoo, the three-headed snake on his arm. Let us undo his shirt. And so they begin to grasp the dwarf and tear at his shirt, but Nergoth says, No, no, stop. I am Nergoth. I am the Emperor. So what of it? Will you sell me now for a ransom? And you will not get much for it if you do. They will not give many gold coins to Guillaume and such as you. Do you think you will get a reward from them? You've got nothing for this battle that you fought. And now I am at your service. Because I am no longer emperor. Though I did crown myself, and I hope to crown myself again someday, I tell you this, if you turn me in, they won't, not only will they not give you a reward, but they will execute you all for treason. Do you not know that the knight who owns this tent and whose liege you are all, do you not know that he is hated among the other Massionids? The kings do not all have kindness, that the, many of the kings hold certain men in contempt. Your knight is one of them, and that is why I chose this tent. I, Nurgoth, Dwarf Emperor. And so what will you do with me then? Will you turn me in? Then suddenly, hard news. A man comes in the tent. It's one of your companions. He's been away for a couple of hours. Something has happened. There's a look on his face. He's very concerned. What is it, human? you say. Harsh news, he says. Our lord and liege, our knight, Sir Dunstark, has been slain, murdered by the blade, by one of the own of the aristocracy, one of the one of his own brethren, one of his own cousins, slew him in cold blood today. After even after a, a wondrous battle, that was his reward to be murdered. No doubt the order of the Massione king. And now, now what of us? We must flee this place. We must scatter, or else they will come after us as witnesses. Certainly I will be hung. Then Nergoth says, What fortuitous news to have come even now as you have captured me, Nergoth, who am now at your service. I have a plan for you. Do you wish to return home? Come with me. Follow me. I am going to take vengeance on the city of wizards, the city of Nistal, deep in the dry blood sea.